make small talk. Okay, mm -hmm. hey, hi everyone. I'm pressing play here on uh, Instagram. Hi Instagram. Hi, Instagram. hi Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, so Bree Johnson, Cap Ohm here. We're talking about our upcoming yoga teacher training mm -hmm. certification course. And we just put it out there into the world recently as of yesterday or the day before. Mm -hmm. And we're really pleasantly surprised at how amazing we've had the response that we've had about this yoga teacher training. And we're gonna talk more about it. So if you have questions, you're so hi Instagram, we're also on Facebook too. So that's why if we're looking uh -huh. here, we're trying to be together and use internet. Wonder. <laughs> uh so hi, hi. <laughs> it's always so much fun uh okay so um so if you want to learn more about it so yeah at any point if you have any questions hi everyone uh yay so if you want to have any if you have, if you want to have a, if you have any questions about the yoga teacher training uh certification course put it into the comments so we're here on instagram but we're also on facebook so we're going to try to get your questions going here. Mm -hmm. um, and so the main thing that we, first thing that I think we want to talk about about the teacher training is that it's actually, the main part about it is that we, we really wanted to make it import, like really accessible for people all around the world. Mm -hmm. Because we know there's this international audience for people who are looking for a progressive, sustainable approach to yoga. And you know we're here in Canada right now. Mm -hmm. You might be over in Europe. You might be in the states. Wherever we are in the world, and that's hard to like. Who can take a month away from their life? Yeah. Or you know, many tr traditional models of yoga teacher trainings are you go once once a month for six months. So none of these regular models have been really you reasonable for for that international audience. So Kat and I. You know, her and I have both taught yoga teacher trainings many times, and we felt we've always felt very limited mm. in yeah. that in that approach and in yeah. that training. And we really know that we want people like we want to try to make it as accessible as possible while fitting into our everyday lives, and also again wherever you are in the world. Mm. So yeah, mm. uh, I think also on my end, I've really been inspired recently doing a teacher training program that is integrating part of daily life practice with online check-ins, as well as a retreat opportunity. And although personally, I'm not someone that learns the best online, I really like seeing a body do it or and or someone support me. Um, there has been something really sweet about this model. And as Bree says, a little bit more accessible for people globally to maybe not have to commit to once once every month or a condensed version version. And it just seems really, really inspiring to do something different and to build community, which is also a big part of what Bree and I really believe in, is how to get this uh, this approach as accessible to people and with a really unique model. Yeah. 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 And so the main point, like the main bulk of this course is all online, right? Mm -hmm. So we've got the modern mm -hmm. yogi course, which some of you have already been a part of, which is wonderful. Thank mm -hmm. you, Jamie, who I just saw join. Hi, Jamie. Um, <coughs> thank mm -hmm. you, Linda. Um, thank you for mm -hmm. your kind words. Mm -hmm. uh, and so there's a big, large online component, but we don't also want to miss out on the live part. Mm -hmm. So we'll just give you the quick overview of the of the structure of the course and then we'll talk again more onto the the whys and the hows. This is all gonna work for us. So there's a so it's gonna be both a two hundred slash three hundred hour training. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about more what that actually means. And um, so bulk of it's going to be online, but there's going to also be a, like monthly check-ins as a group. Mm -hmm. So everybody who's going, no matter where you are in the world, everybody who's going through the course, the th all of us are all going to check in live like this, of course, not on public, <laughs> but, you know, in, in like live webinar things and, and go deeper, do more question and answers and have that really beautiful community connection so that, you know, us in Canada, somebody in, um, hey, Jamie, uh, hi, Dan. Uh, so, you know, us in Canada, so Jamie, who I know is in uh, the States, or we've got somebody over in Croatia, right, all doing it, we can even see each other. And so mm. when we come into the live portion of the training, depending on which training you decide to do, then we actually get to meet in, in person and do all of that wonderful uh, 
connection. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be two live trainings. I think there was a question previously about, oh, do we have to do both? And no, you get to choose no matter where you are in the world. The one in Europe, we're probably going to do Spain or Portugal in the off season in January. So it's rough, like it's fairly uh, affordable for us to travel if you're in uh, Europe, the UK. And then, uh, and that will be next January, 2019. And then May, early May, 2019, Canmore, mm -hmm. Alberta, which is right in the heart of the Rocky Mountains. So for all of the North American people, that's just a beautiful place to, to be and travel to. So if we get more people and then there's enough, then we might do one in the States if there's, mm. so we're open just to, we're going to see what, how registrations go. Yeah. UK, I know. Yeah, Linda. Yeah. But if you're in the UK, it's cheap to come to Spain. It's too expensive. We, like we are trying to really make this as accessible as possible. So it was like, okay, we could host it in the UK, but then I think we can, everybody can stay cheaper in January in somewhere like Spain. So anyways, we're open to ideas and suggestions mm -hmm. as well. Nothing mm -hmm. set in stone in that way, in that mm -hmm. sense. Um, and then, and then, yeah, gross, and more in. I want to, Newfoundland, I know, Sonia. <laughs> we will get to, we will be there. Um, hi, Tara, you're late. Is this for a training and a workshop? This is specifically for a yoga teacher training, and we're focusing on what we're calling kind of the new model. Yeah. Because this is okay, so so let's talk about the setup and why we came up with this. Because we're awesome. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and there's a, I think there's a pioneering thing that's happening here mm -hmm. because I think for a lot of us, this approach to this approach to yoga, whatever it is, um, is because things need to shift, you know. And the and the, mm -hmm. and the yoga alliance, two hundred, three hundred hour model. I've taught them, I've run them, you've done them as well. Mm -hmm. And they're in, in our opinion, they're really limiting for the stuff that we want to, the, in, in our experience um, as teachers, teaching teachers to teach, we, we feel that that model is mm -hmm. like the stuff that we know to be true and the stuff that we know to, that makes a really effective teacher doesn't always get to be fit into that, that, that again, that typical yoga teacher certification. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything that you want to add on that? Mm. I think just for me, to, A, to be careful with the words that how this might come across is that it's a standardized 200 hour. And when Bree and I were talking, we were like, well, how did this even come up? How is it a standardized like this? Like who came up with this? Yeah. Standard? And not saying whether it's right or it's wrong, but as we were trying to fit in and mold, we realized that's not exactly who we are. And then we started to tease apart other trainings we've done. And especially if they're out of the yoga world, like for myself who's done some Pilates training, they're not even $200. And yet for me, what I received in that information from my Pilates mat work was so beneficial. And so with that, it gave both of us, I think, a little bit more esteem to be like, okay, we can actually do this different. We don't have to follow this model. It's not that this model is, as I, I want to reiterate, it's not bad. It's just not for us. So then because we're kind of, well, she's more the creator. I just follow them. No, because we're a little bit more creativitist. Create, creatrix? I don't know. What's the word there? Creatives. Creatives? I don't know. There's some adverb or Ren verb or something that I could Renegades. use. Renegades. Yeah. We really did want to create something, A, using technology, kind of stripping away a certain model. Yeah. And building community. So going back to that online. So we are meeting each other all over the world, whether or not we're going to be in a live training together. We're going to learn so much from each other when we're on the live chats. So, yeah. I don't know. I might have just repeated myself. Before. Yeah. No, but I think, yeah, Tara, I agree. It's super interesting. I think it takes, there's so, there's enough, I'm, what I'm seeing in the work that I'm doing and connecting with people all over the world, I'm really seeing that there's enough of us and I get it. I get it. This is what started. I really literally said, I will never do a teacher training again because yeah, yeah. I didn't like the model. So that's yeah. why I do my own little like mentorships. And then, but I've had enough people going, so I, I want to do a teacher training. I want to do it with you. I want to do it in this, you know, sustainable yoga approach, but I don't want to take a 200 hour to get certified mm -hmm. and then have to unlearn half of it mm -hmm. just because I need that certification. Mm -hmm. So this is, so that's, I think the heart of this is that mm -hmm. we're trying to answer that problem mm -hmm. of hearing from a lot of teachers and a lot of people who love, you know, how do we integrate movement science? How do we integrate mindfulness, the work and into supporting a really positive, um, 
unique progressive approach to yoga. And as far as I know, there's not that many teacher trainings out there. Mm. And again, it's not isolated to the location that we're in. This is a worldwide growing community mm -hmm. and movement, so to speak. Mm. And so we like, okay, well, how do we serve that? Mm -hmm. So I think it's kind of amazing that we get to connect mm -hmm. online mm -hmm. and, and offer this new approach. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so nice. again everybody who's just joining hi everyone we're talking about especially on instagram because we can't there's no uh this is my sign for typing um <laughs> you like so what we're talking about is our uh yoga teacher training the instagram people you're welcome to go on to heartbonesyoga.com under courses you'll see the information about uh this course <laughs> Okay, so yeah, our so for us it was solving a need that yeah. we saw that just people really want to do have good body education, good movement education. I'm like, how do you? And, and this is the issue that I find with a lot of teachers. They ask me, how do we put together all of that beautiful movement education, mm -hmm. anatomy, applied anatomy, not just these are your in origins and insertions. Like none mm -hmm. of this is actually applicable mm -hmm. in a real life yoga class. Mm -hmm. So what we're, our work is, okay, we'll teach you anatomy, we'll teach you movement, but in an applicable, mm -hmm. functional, actually useful sort of way. Mm -hmm. And keeping the heart of yoga. Because mm -hmm. I think that's yeah. also it. I think sometimes we can get really sucked into the movement and the, and the oh, cool, here's the new mobility trick. And we forget about the yoga. Mm -hmm. We forget about the work of the heart and the work mm -hmm. of the mind. And so right. Kat, so Kat here is one mm -hmm. of the most, in like, so she, she's so humble, so I have to pump her up. Uh, you know, like, <clears throat> like the depth of her training and knowledge, not just in the body, but in mindfulness, sitting, you know, multiple retreats in silence in Burma, um, different places around the world. Like this, this woman is a wealth of knowledge. So she's actually kind of amazing because she can unpack the mind and unpack the body and just put the mind and the body together mm -hmm. or the heart and the bones. <laughs> so, um, you know, so Kat's like, I'm so excited to have her be a part of this. And I, anything else you'd like to add on to that? I think too, um, one thing that when Brie and I, we've been kind of speaking about this, it feels like for years on and off in different ways, depending where we, we have been as uh, facilitators or part of different programs, uh, facilitating and or for myself, and herself on the other end being you know in a training program getting our own certification is that we wanted to make it like strip it down a bit and make it really concise because there is so much that we can share or so much that we can learn and I know sometimes I've come out of programs and I'm like I don't even know where to begin I look at my manual I look at my notes and I'm like oh, so I'm supposed to teach this to someone yeah okay right what, what part and so we're really wanting to make it comprehensive concise, as, as Bree said, really allowing it to be very accessible, allowing the anatomy to be very functional, exploratory, which is important, so that people feel it in their bodies too. Because I do sometimes think, and many of you may or may not know, that I have chosen not to have these things, which are really quite fun to be on. <laughs> these things called social media. Social media <laughs> and even a laptop. <laughs> oh my God. But I always kind of joke that we know more about the apps on our phone then sometimes how our body moves, right? And so it's <laughs> good. And yeah. yeah, it's live now. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> and so I really do believe that there is a way for us to feel and embody or that somatic being simple, mm -hmm. concise, comprehensive, actually, which I know might sound like a juxtaposition. It's not. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Yeah, but it's like, and I was like, just you say that it's like moving from theory into practice. Because yeah. again, we can go into these. Yeah, and I, I don't know if everybody listening has had that experience where you do a training and you're like, oh my God, I love it, and your brain explodes and it's great. And then you go and teach a class and you're like, how do I put that new knowledge? Mm -hmm. Like, and, and that's hard. And so what, and we've been there, we've done that. And, and my, I think both of us as teachers, that's, that's so much of what we want and love. Mm -hmm. How do you make it applicable? Mm -hmm. How do you integrate that information also for yourself? Yeah. Not because Kat and Brie told you to do this. Like that's the last thing that we want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. This isn't about creating a new yoga style. This isn't about some TM thing. This is about, okay, critical thinking, 
good education and knowledge and then putting it in your words and in your voice. Mm. So another large part of this that I feel super proud, I think we both feel super passionate about is the leadership aspect of this. Mm -hmm. So it's that beautiful blend between, you know, a yoga teacher education, yoga teacher training, moving theory to practice, movement, uh, movement, anatomy, all that fun stuff into the practice of yoga. But the difference with this is that we, we are really hopeful that we're going to build yoga leaders. Mm -hmm. And so what's the difference between a yoga leader and a yoga teacher? One's not better or the other, but, um, yeah, Tara, I'm going to answer your question in two seconds. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you. Uh, so to me, I, I identify a yoga leader as somebody, because also this is a progressive approach. The, what we're teaching you isn't just, these are your five cues that you say for Trikonasana for everybody. Like that's not what you're going to get in this. It's like, here's the building blocks. Mm. Here's the information mm. of movement, of mindfulness. And now how do you adapt that to an individual? Mm -hmm. So... Mm -hmm. And being and so a leader is somebody who's bold enough to do something different. Mm -hmm. A leader is somebody who's willing to move beyond the status quo of what was, and yet still acknowledging the tradition. Because mm -hmm. it's not like we're throwing the yoga baby out with the mm -hmm. bathwater. Mm -hmm. But it's it's yeah, because you need to be bold mm -hmm. to and, do this. And I also think confidence. I know I'm just going to go back to Pilates. That um, when we were doing our Pilates teacher training, just real brief, we would have to design a program and so this one time I went in and I had my program and then my teacher was was um, kind of pretending or acting that he had a whole different ailment basically what I had to do was throw up my class plan and trust that I knew how to teach this particular body and for me it was like whoa especially when it's somebody he's kind of my mentor and I'm like oh really you're, putting, you're doing that to me really great but it did allow me to build on confidence. Like, no, I know how to do this. I can teach the, to the body in front of me. I don't need my script. Not to say that scripts are good or bad, but I think it is to be a leader in this, to have the confidence and the trust that we actually do know a lot. We do. And maybe certain cues work for Chikanasana, but maybe not. You, you know, and so mm -hmm. how to teach to all those individuals in, in front of you yeah. is something that... Yeah. And giving you the tools to do that. Because we know mm -hmm. that, and, and this is, again, working with the people that we've worked with over the years, is there's like, to me, there's always two layers. The first layer is, here's the information, here's my questions, here's like the surface stuff. But the work, but underneath it, I'm often hearing, well, who am I to be bold and change mm -hmm. something? Oh, I feel like an imposter. Uh, you know, like, uh, uh, uh. like, so does that make sense for everybody? That sense of, uh, mm -hmm. as a teacher. So that's part of that leadership side of this mm -hmm. in this program is that it's not just, okay, here's all the movement information. Here's how you put it into yoga. But it's like, what are those fears? What are those things that are stopping you from being who you are, for being the teacher that you know you can be? Mm -hmm. And we work with that. And we, oh, like that's my favorite part about mm -hmm. all of this. Mm -hmm. And so that you can move forward and be the best teacher out there. You can be confident and, and not confident in working with the bodies in front of you, mm -hmm. confident in promoting a workshop, mm -hmm. confident in, you know, like doing whatever you need to do and figuring out it also too, who are you as a teacher? So mm -hmm. we'll do a lot of that work, right. you know, like finding your voice and not because we don't need replicas of us. I, I will never allow that to <laughs> not need that. We, we mm -hmm. need more of you. We don't need more me. We don't need more cat. Mm -hmm. You don't need more Instagram celebrity yogi. It's like, who are you as a teacher? So we mm -hmm. do a lot of that work within this. Um, there was something else I was going to say that you, that you said that sparked something, but now I don't remember. Anyway, so feel free. <laughs> there's questions as well. And so I'm going to actually go back to Tara had a question here. So also, how do you make it accessible to all folks? One thing I didn't fully learn in my, two. so how do you make the yoga practice successful? I mean, um, accessible for all folks is that I'm, I'm assuming that's what you're asking. You to me, I actually feel like, to be honest, there's no such thing as truly making it accessible to everybody. Mm. So, and I, and I think, and I mean that in a, like, because everybody's so diverse, mm. I think there are times where some you'll, and this is hopefully what you'll learn <clears throat> through this training is that articulating who you are and what you can teach. And so accessible mm. for me might be different in the way that CAD approaches accessibility. Mm. Or maybe if you work with seniors, that's a, that's a very specific type of accessibility. So there's also that recognition that all one class won't uh, rule them all. Mm. One, the, like, yeah. Would you say yeah. anything else you want to add on that? 
And it also depends what you mean by accessibility, because if accessibility is for people with limited mobility, right, or time, like that's kind of a, a loaded or a broad, right, for me, a broad um, question. You know, or accessibility if people have arthritic, arthritic knees and you're going to, your whole class plan or your idea was to do something in tabletop position, right? Um, how to, how to adapt, I guess, with modifications. Yeah. Me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I yeah. remember, yeah. So it's like, how do it, so it's like, there's that first layer of information of like, how do we adapt? But then, and then there's the leadership side of it, which is underneath going, uh, okay, I'm, I'm clear on what I can offer, I'm clear on what I can't offer. And so that helps that sense of accessibility too, if that, if that yeah, makes sense. Because yeah, totally. then you don't have to try to be everything to everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Tara, yeah. that looks like that answered that. And then Carrie, uh, will this be an online training? Yeah. So to reiterate, for anybody who's just joining, we're talking about the Heart Bones Yoga Teacher Certification. And the main mm -hmm. goal of this was to have it all online. So uh, not all of it online, sorry, the majority, let's call it 95%. I'm just yeah. making up a percentage, <laughs> but a big part of it online. And then two different that you can choose. You don't have to do two. You do one of the five day trainings mm -hmm. live. So it's, and then there's going to be monthly check-ins like this. So in a way, this is like a little glimpse mm. where you would see Kat and I, whether we're at our own houses mm -hmm. or together, and then you'd actually see each other. So mm -hmm. everybody who's in the training, whether you, if you can come in live and everything would be recorded, we would have these group talks. So yeah. whether it's the specific uh, thing that we're talking about or Q&A or blah, 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 but then you mm. have that community. So we're really mm. wanting to find that sweet spot in our modern world yeah. of the internet yeah. and yet live. Yeah. So yeah. that we can build more yoga leaders around the world, people who are bold enough to step into authority and into this role of progressive yoga people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yoga people. Yeah. And also, I think, enjoying the passion. Like, I think, you know, Brie and I are doing this um, because we're so passionate about movement. And in our own way, as I said, ebbed and flow with whether or not it was the proper time for us to do a certification program and all of a sudden it became, oh yeah, no, the time is right. And I think maybe one thing that might have spawned what I said earlier was again, go back to my Pilates teacher, that this is a real, we want to have a passionate leadership because people are coming to us with their bodies, with their hearts. And it's like, wow, this is great. Like, look, you're, you're giving you to me for this hour or hour and a half. And so this real symbiotic relationship too, that I'm passionate to share with you meaning the student and the student is in, in investing a lot of trust in us. Right. So yeah. how do we now? Oh, and like, so we're going to cover a lot of that stuff of like, mm -hmm. how do we navigate that trust? How mm -hmm. do we navigate that uh, connection so that it's not, so that it's truly supportive, yeah. you know, like it's not this hierarchical, I am your teacher and let me, sh let me tell you what is your, mm -hmm. what your body needs. Like mm -hmm. this is not to me again, that's that leadership. It's like, no, we are all human beings. Mm -hmm. And we're all just trying to help each other. Mm -hmm. So how do we as teachers do that well? Mm -hmm. How do we as teachers do that <laughs> with intention and integrity? Oh, yeah. You know, so this is the, so the thing that I forgot, now I remember, <laughs> is there, so there's that, so the, all of what we're talking about is that surface layer in some ways where it's like, okay, we're teaching yoga, we're teaching movement, we're talking about the dynamics, but Kat and I are so mm -hmm. excited and interested in talking about the underlying contexts of what I've been calling the questions underneath the questions. Mm -hmm. So I'll share something that happened in a training recently where somebody asked a question of, oh, my hamstrings, mm -hmm. I've been doing yoga for so long, why aren't my hamstrings more open? And so there's, so this is what I mean with the surface. So the surface answer was she just wanted to know physically what was going on, but I couldn't let that question go because mm -hmm. I heard the question underneath the question, which was, that I wanted to address, which was, well, why do you think your hamstrings need to be more open? Mm. Like to me, that's what's fascinating. Mm. And that's that taking, elevating it from yoga practice and yoga teaching to yoga leadership, because mm. we're aware of the causes and conditions and the cultural conditioning that we all are not immune to, mm. even as yogis. Mm -hmm. So then there's twofold there. So yeah, I, we'll be able to answer why are my hamstrings not more open? <laughs> that's a simple, you know, physical answer, but I, what about, um, doing, oh, yeah, 
mean? Uh, what about doing, okay, why are my hamstrings more open? But why do we care if our hamstrings yeah. are open? What are we really asking? Is, is that question, is the, is the quiet question underneath the question more like, am I not good enough because my mm. hamstrings aren't more open? Mm. Why do I need to have more open hamstrings? Why is this even a thing? Mm. Like, so this is, if that resonates with you, this is the, the stuff that we're going to unpack mm. in the training. And so that to me, again, is that boldness, that confidence, that leadership mm. so that we, we are aware and we see the whole picture so that we can better navigate uh, um, everybody. So hi, Vanny. Uh, I'm a student, but I can see how beneficial this talk is for you. Oh, you're <laughs> awesome, Vanny. That's awesome. But it is. I yeah. think we need uh, Kat, you're on social media. Yes. I know. Don't is. tell anybody, okay? It's secret. No, I'm pull, I pull her in every so often. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but I, right. Like, so like uh, to me and like, so both of us have been teaching for over 15 years now, mm -hmm. like full time. This has been our full time gig for over fifth, like 16 mm -hmm. now years. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, I think over the years we've seen like a really good to me, the, the really good teacher is the one who's aware of all of this. Isn't mm -hmm. just like, put your arm here. Not mm -hmm. to say that's like, and we're not really not saying that's good or bad. It's just. There's a difference, and there's a there's a wholeheartedness that's involved with yeah. this. Well, I think too over time, um, as Brie kind of mentioned, due to the, my practice in within meditation, there's there's this really beautiful Zen saying: this gradual cultivation and sudden awakening. So it, within the mind or the heart, and also what I find is within refined movement or careful movement and just persistence, even within my own hamstrings or back bends. And then there's like, when this refinement gets gritty, I do ask the questions underneath. Like for a while for me, I was chasing backbends. I don't even know why. I think because I thought I was supposed to do a backbend. And actually I was just in a way hurting myself because there was a little bit of a tweak, a whisper in the body, but I wasn't paying attention to it. If any of you have ever done this in any movement practice, right? And then the, to me, it wasn't a careful attention. It wasn't kindness. It was almost self-harming. It was a little bit of craving, meaning, oh, I wanted this. And so I hope I'm uh, kind of articulating this well, that the questions under the questions or this, you know, really, really gradual, gradual cultivation is like, oh, relief. I don't have to do a back bend. Oh, my body is okay as it is. Oh, maybe I was chasing something not accessible. And with our kind of depth of our experience, both personally as practitioners and as well as um, we both still love, we're kind of geeks and we still go on a lot of our own um, trainings, is being with very mature practitioners and also how they, as we said, concise, simple practice. That's enough. Yeah. That's enough. Like it's almost the manure. It's the compost, right? Mm -hmm. That's where the growth is. Mm -hmm. If that resonates. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And I, I like the word maturity. I think, and that's who we're looking for for this course in is that sense is people who are willing to not just like i need a yoga certification yay you know like but like those who are actually willing to get in there and do all the work and do all the learning with compassion and love and community and relationship mm -hmm. you know so it's 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 big mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, let me throw in one little logistic thing here because we've talked about like, well, what is the 200? What is a 300? Like, again, who made that up? Like, li like if anybody actually has an answer. Yeah. I, we, we were, were just talking about, sorry. We have no idea yeah. <laughs> where that came from. And yeah. it's fine. It's cool. Like in my perfect world, a yoga teacher training would actually be like a thousand hours. <laughs> but that's, again, logistic time and money. We want to try to make this accessible. So we're calling it both a 200 and a 300 hour because like it's all made up. <laughs> That just instilled a lot of confidence in all of you. We're making this. Up. No, but like everybody's making it up. Like that's what I mean. Like it's all. Like, do you know what I mean? Like it's I, like it's all made up. It's all just a piece of paper. Um, so so we're like, well, okay. So because to us, it's not quality or it's not quantity. It's not. It's quality. Like being like there's a maturity in our practice. If we'll just tune our own horns at this point, but I think like to be bold enough to talk about our again, we're eternal students. Blah blah blah. Yeah. But we're at a place where we can you know streamline information, cut out the fat, yeah. and give the, the the real world teaching tools and education that a real life modern yoga 
person, practitioner and teacher needs, mm -hmm. you know? So is it 300 hours? Is it a million hours? Ultimately, we also know that you're learning. A good teacher never stops learning. We never stop learning. So yeah. this is just one pit stop yeah. on your learning path. Yeah. So we decided to go and, and actually say, so for those who've never done it, so here's some criteria. If you've never done a yoga teacher training, you don't have a 200 hour, that's okay. Obviously, you have to have some yoga experience, whatever that means. But we're looking for people who are who are already in this paradigm of mm -hmm. critical thinking, of thinking outside the box, of um, who are willing to ask questions and not do what tradition has always dictated. Not to say that tradition's bad, right? But there's mm -hmm. some things that need to evolve. Um, so at the end of this training, you know, all you all things considered, you will be able to get a 200 hour certification. For the person who already has a 300 hour or 200 hour, you'll get a 300 hour. Mm. Like, will it be a 100% 200 and 300 hours? Mm. Who mm. knows? Who cares? Because mm. we're, we believe so much that what you're getting is, again, we're cutting the fat, so to speak, out of the training. Mm. And getting into the, like, again, the skills you need, the heart work that you need, the mind work of, the, of, of everything. So it's, I don't know if that sounds interesting to you guys. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing some likes, a laughter at all, a <laughs> thumbs up. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I think also just to add on to this, like, we really trust we're going to, we're going, this is going to appeal, as Bree said, to those of us who are already kind of moving a little bit differently whatever that means, as Brie kind of calls it, this new movement of curiosity and exploration, maybe how we adapt functional movement, maybe how we change, how we, we teach a traditional pose, whatever that traditional pose is. And so we really trust that we're going to get the people that are like, yeah, okay, this, this is the way I want to teach and learn. And I want to be in a global community. And we're going to learn from each other in the global community because people are going to, somebody will ask a question that's been burning in your mind and you never asked it. And there it is. And you're like, ah. Look, it's great. Yeah. And so we really do just trust if this is, you know, open to you or curious to you, great. And if it's not, that's just as great too. Then yeah. you'll find your way. Oh yeah. my God. You have more than really. enough yoga teacher yeah, training options really. out there to, yeah. to find the fit for yeah. you. So what we like, we like, we trust yeah. that. And I just know like this community in this world is growing. So here's another incentive is that I'm going to have a, I'm going to prophesize for the moment. Mm, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> mark my words, my friends, <laughs> is that like, like, cause I've just seen in the last however many years that more and more people are approaching this alternative way of thinking. This yeah. is the wave of the future. Mm. And so you getting certified and I really, I put that in quotations because it's a piece of paper, but, um, you know, like it's, it's, but it's, it's the educational experience. Mm -hmm. It's, it's your yoga PhD. I always like thinking about that, mm -hmm. um, that you will then be a new leader mm -hmm. in this. Mm -hmm. So if that sounds scary, that's good. Cause we'll work with that fear. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, so it's like all those, all these layers of what this training is going to give you is like, if you're like, who am I to be yeah, a leader? Yeah. Well, we'll help you. Yeah. I, Cause I say, who aren't you yeah. to be a leader? Mm -hmm. My friends. Mm -hmm. Um, Okay. So I, I see a question, uh, Tara Charles, do y'all have dates set for when this program starts? Yeah. <laughs> Ish? No, 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 no. <laughs> Ultimately, so because the majority of the online portion is the modern yogi. So I've had this online yoga teacher development course for the last year and a half or so. And that's available at any point. Um, and those who are already part of the yoga, online yoga teacher training who have done the modern yoga yogi before, this will be an add-on. And there's also going to be more material that we're adding into the course. So whether or not you do the certification, you're just mm -hmm. automatically going to get the benefits of the extra material that Kat and I are going to be putting in. Mm -hmm. So there's your bonus, my modern yogis. Uh, so that you can join that anytime. Go to heartbondsyoga.com. Or then you can, and then you can also set up, sign up for the teacher training certification mm -hmm. portion at any point. The actual, and get started on the online course. The actual groups, online stuff that we're going to do together like this will be, I think we're talking about June. Mm -hmm. We're going to do it from June to December. And then the live five day teacher training portions, the European one will be in uh, end of probably the last weekend of January, 2019. And then early May for the Canadian North American portion. Um, what did I say? Early May 19, yeah. 2019. And yeah. if we get randomly tons of people and 
we need a new spot, then we'll throw in another week. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so everything's open. So I hope that helps for the date. So it's not, so ultimately, basically what I'm saying is that you can start immediately getting into the online content or you can, um, uh, Register when, it, when yeah. registration opens. I don't yeah. know if we're going to do a cutoff date. We kind of want it to be like, yeah. That's like that's, get, sign up sooner than later. Yeah. <laughs> and some of this, as you can tell, we're still in the building blocks of it as well, right? So um, I don't know. We're, and we're, we're those type, I'm the type of teacher, I shouldn't speak for my friend too, that, you know, sometimes have deadlines. Yeah. Just saying <laughs> in my life. So meaning that we don't, we haven't set our deadline yet of when registration is going to close, etc. Yeah. That part of it, where that's what I mean by the building blocks. Yeah. So yeah. So you can start anytime. So if you have any more questions, uh, feel free to put put them in here. We're happy to answer. I'm going to say one more thing about the structure. So I think we've talked about the overview of the mm -hmm. course, right, and the structure. Um, but I want to reiterate that it is the building blocks. So to me, the way that I interpret all of this work, because there's this is the way the big picture, it's like there's so much information out there. So anybody who's into movement, anatomy, biomechanics, we have so many beautiful people that we can learn from, so many uh, pathways, but it can, can be confusing. And okay, well, actually, how do I put that into a yoga practice and not lose yoga? Mm. <laughs> so you're right. So like, how do I actually still make it look like a yoga class at my yoga studio that I teach in or the people who aren't ready for this different approach. So what we're doing in this course is creating the foundation of your understanding of human movement. So very simple. Again, it's not going to be anatomy where you have to memorize every single muscle unless you want to, uh, you know, but we're not going to be like this muscle attaches here, blah, blah, blah. It's like, these are these muscles that are around the shoulder joint, and this is what the shoulder joint needs for sustainability and health. And these, and knowing these information, the, the building blocks, knowing the foundations, mm. then you can take that. What we're aiming for, and this is that leadership side of it, is that you are able to take that information and skillfully apply it for yourself, and skillfully apply it to the individuals in your class. Mm. So again, rather than this is like we don't need another style of yoga. The world doesn't need more of that. We don't need more trademark stuff. This is another thing that I like to call it is like open sourced yoga. Mm -hmm. So it's taking from a lot of different modalities and infusing mm -hmm. and enhancing the practice mm -hmm. so that again, so you can't walk away with real world skills, tools, and information so that you're confident to do something different. You're confident in what and your why. Oh mm. my God, talking about the why is again some of my favorite stuff. Like, why do I teach? Who am I as a yoga teacher? Mm. So there's just so much, um, so much juicy stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do you have anything that you want to add on that? Mm. Do you want to talk more about? So again, I want to reiterate how, like, so cat having cat a part of this is she's a wealth of information on movement in the body, but she's really a wealth of information on the on mindfulness mm. and not meditation, but mindfulness as a way of viewing the world. Mm. So I don't know if you want to add add that for yeah. Um, yeah. So kind of my journey, I've been involved in kind of mindfulness as as the Buddha taught. So there, sometimes I can. Um, I love talking about the Buddha and I love talking about different suttas. And so throughout my journey, there's been times where it's been very strict in monasteries and then time right now where I'm doing my own online course and it's just like, wow, once again, I'm in Save One Foods and once again, I'm impatient. Hmm. So allowing mindfulness to really be what I've been calling it lately is infused, infused in the body. And when mindfulness, I believe, is infused in the body, there's this diffuse that happens in the neural pathways of Entanglement. And so part of when Brie and I, when we get together and we chat and it's, who knows what we get to chat about, our husbands, our kids, our cats, banking, you know, everything just real life stuff that we realize that this is a huge component for people too, to be seen and to be heard and to take, yes, some of the meditation techniques, which I have found invaluable in my, my life, for sure. And I, you know, I practice daily-ish. But who am I when there's a difficult coworker? You know, I talked recently about Carver, my husband and I meeting and um, we were both hangry, hungry, and we started talking about taxes and how that went. <laughs> you know, so mindfulness being this beautiful arena of the heart that we explore with care, with attention. And when we explore it with attention, there's this intention to learn, a curiosity. Um, 
I guess one last thing because I could talk so much about this is that sometimes it's also proven a little bit in neuroscience. You know, when things are difficult, I've talked about this before online, when things are difficult, we push back from it. We don't want to see it. You know, we don't want to be with it. We avoid or we numb. And mindfulness is like, no, okay, I'm going to fuse this. I'm going to be with it. What can I learn from it? Which is a big part of this whole practice. Like that's why I think Bree and I are going to blend and integrate so well together because it's who we are. We're curious. You know, sometimes even for myself on retreats, a teacher would say something, I'm like, I totally don't believe him. And then, you know, an hour later, I'm like, whoa, huh? I just saw the mind do that. <laughs> Great. You know, so yes, we, we have so much to share from our own experience, but it's also up to us to learn together. That, that curious learner, a lot of interest, a lot of curiosity, constantly asking questions, you know. It's a big part of mindfulness. Is this true? I said all this up, you know, with my thoughts. I'm like, is this even true? Is it skillful? So... Mm -hmm. Anyways, yeah. So you see that real? No, that's great. So you see that integrated uh, approach. So yeah, te so again, it's like that leveling up what a yoga teacher is. This is yoga leadership. This is how we like truly living yoga, mm -hmm. being embodied in our in our bodies, being heartfelt, being heart centered, compassionate, as she said, to ourselves. Yeah to each other you know and, and this is where we're so excited is this community aspect of the training where you know like obviously as you've been if you've been watching this this whole time like Kat and I are real people we are not like <laughs> we're got, like remotely interested in mm. welcome mm -hmm. to our you know like mm. it's like so we'll all so we'll we have things to share but we also know that every single one of you who are going to be in this training have things to share as well mm -hmm. and, and offer value and especially an experience that's going to enhance everybody's learning. Mm -hmm. So this is that community. This is that, that, that co-creation that I'm like, that we're both so passionate about. Mm -hmm. So forget about the hierarchical teaching structures. That's done. Those days are gone. It's over that male, you know, men, maybe women, but you know, like that, the model's changing the model, basically. Do yeah, yeah, like you this is again the leadership. It's like the model is changing. And yeah. we and it doesn't just change by magic. It doesn't just change one day out of the blue. It requires all of us to play our parts mm -hmm. in this. Mm -hmm. So Kat and I are being bold, stepping forward and going, Hey, we think yoga teacher trainings can be a little bit different. Let's see. Mm. <laughs> you know, and it's then an experiment. <laughs> And then see, and then you step into your world and your community, going, okay, I know what I know what is true in my experience. I'm willing to make that change. So I, I always frame that as as yoga as a living tradition. Mm. So it's not throwing the yoga out with the bathwater. It's it's I love all these hearts that wow, are. Wow, we're getting this like explosion okay. here. Okay, <laughs> my eyes just see these moving targets. Uh, so those are it's Instagram. We're on Facebook too, and we just had a whole heart explosion. Okay, yeah. Um, uh, okay, where were we? So you know. <sighs> so all right so the living yoga is a living tradition, tradition yeah. means that we all have to play, take a responsibility to play a role in this mm -hmm. and if that's scary good yeah. good because yeah. this is this is life yeah. and that fear is where the magic is yeah. so so if this resonates hooray if it doesn't resonate hooray mm -hmm. right there's more than enough mm -hmm. training education for all of us out yeah. there yeah, yeah. okay so i would love i think this is feeling like you said everything we felt like we needed. So. Do you feel? Okay. Yeah, Allie. Really, yeah. We're, we're excited to do <laughs> this and learn and journey together. It really, as Bree said, it, it's a little bit of an experiment on our, our part, but it felt like causes and conditions, as Bree said earlier, came together and it's like, okay, the time is now. Yeah. So yeah, here we go. And the desire seems to be there and, yeah. and, and making this again, like being all of us journeying yeah. together and like, I watch in a couple of years, this is going to be the normal. There's mm -hmm. my prophecy. <laughs> yeah. So get movement, on functional movement. So get in yeah. on this while it's still early. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that awesome. More better. Yeah. Exactly, Kim. I know. Oh, exactly. Kim's there. Hey, Yay. Kim. And then Ali, yeah, thank you, Ali, and thank you for your wisdom. Mm -hmm. um, so please, so we'll stay on for like another moment or a couple minutes if anybody has questions for us. Um, yay, Sonia, you're in, you're in. And then we'll get to uh, Gross Moran. Gross, Gross Moran, is that how you pronounce I'm not it? Even, I don't even know how in you pronounce it. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to go to Newfoundland. Hello, yeah. so, right, gorgeous. Mm -hmm. um, and then anybody else, Jordan Bennett, wish you could be more mindful. Jordan, it's a moment to moment 
thing. Would you say so for the person who wishes they could be more mindful? Mm -hmm. It's not a wish. Mm -hmm. It's not something that just magically I'm mindful and then it stays yeah. mindful always. So yeah, just a, just as everything changes, just to be also aware, mindfulness changes. Mindfulness will come and go. So yeah, when mindfulness is there, we're infused with it. We have a bit more receptivity. We receive the present moment. When mindfulness is not there, we're chasing it. That's, that's all. So when it's there, celebrate. When it's not there, it's okay. So yeah. Because it's always there. Ish. You just have to be aware of it. Ish. Oh God. See, so this is <laughs> the depth of the practice coming out. Yeah. Uh, Maybe we all just find our body. How's that? Yeah. <laughs> Let's start there. Be embodied yeah. for our hearts and our minds. Yeah. Um, Allie, okay, where can you find the info for the training? Yeah, go to heartbonesyoga.com, and then it'll be under, in the selection at the top, it'll be under courses, and you'll see two courses there. One is the modern yogi, uh, just straight like no certification teacher development course. You can sign up for that at any point. And then the one course listed underneath is a certification portion, mm -hmm. which is the Modern Yogi online course. We're gonna be adding more content. We're gonna be doing, uh, what did I say? Like monthly group calls, mm -hmm. check-in projects for you to deepen your practice, and then a five-day live training. So that's the overview. So go to, uh, go to uh yeah heartbonesyoga.com mm -hmm. so i see so training pebbles trailing pebbles hi <laughs> you're one date only for europe 2018 yeah right now. right now and so so and that's going to be the end of january depending we haven't uh found our location yet so we can't but we're, we're aiming for the end of january and i uh, will be doing but again, we're, we're open. If there's enough people that sign up, we can add another date. Yeah. So we're yeah, totally yeah. flexible and open. I love that this is just uh, interesting for people. Yeah. Okay. So, and then Allie, are, am I, no, you know what? Work, uh, come to, I don't I know you've got your teacher training, Allie. Uh, I'm, I'm doing my fourth weekend of the yoga mentorship training, uh, and you're welcome to join that. So send me an email if you want. That's going to be April the first weekend in April, so not this weekend, but next weekend. So Ali, and then otherwise, um, my my workshops uh, die down for the spring summer, uh, and then and then I'm going to be in Europe in the UK in the fall with Heart Bones World Tour. <laughs> so, like a yoga rock star. So we'll be adding. We'll be. I'll give more information there. Um, okay, so I think that's great. And no more questions. Oh, you'll be in, oh darn, you're gonna be in Bali. You're too bad. Oh, Bali, enjoy. Awesome. awesome. Bali. Okay, oh. but we'll make room for each other. So, so we'll stay connected. Um, okay, and so this, uh, when, when, when for what? The trailing pebbles. You're asking when for the uh, January teacher training in UK? I'm gonna, or in, okay, yeah, Ellie, you. Anyways, uh, trailing pebbles, when, let us know when what? What is when? What's the question? <laughs> if that helps. And then uh, this is, oh, in the UK. Oh, when am I going to be in the UK? Uh, going to be, yeah, so I'll be actually Belfast in September, and then I'm uh, confirming dates for Scotland and another UK location. So this is going to be, so stay tuned. Uh, it's going to be exciting and super fun. And then Switzerland in January, I mean in November, and then Sweden in October. Okay, Good. so that's just pause. We lost our connection. Oh, you're in India with Craft Enjoy. Oh, fun! Enjoy India. Mm -hmm. uh, trailing with Pebbles, whatever your real name is. <laughs> okay, so anybody who's watching on Instagram, the full, because this will stay on Instagram, but you can go over to Heart and Bones Yoga on Facebook, because I don't think on Instagram Lives you can fast forward, which is annoying. So if you actually want to kind of fast forward through some of the stuff, people on Instagram, go to Heart and Bones Yoga on Facebook. Mm -hmm. My Facebook people, this is going to be on the page that you can refer to forever and <laughs> share if you want. Mm. Um, okay. I think anything else you want to add? No. Can, are you doing any trainings? I'm doing, I'm doing a little retreat here in Edmonton, just outside of Edmonton, a little mindfulness movement uh, retreat in when? July, beginning of July at a friend's property. And then, um, when? Yeah. So you can and find Paul, or you can go to my website, movingmindfully.ca. So yeah. And she's doing a, a retreat in Nepal. I usually don't talk about my stuff, so it's really kind of funny. Anyways, I know so, she, we, we won't open the box on that. <laughs> I pull her into the yeah. social media world. Really, but from my heart, I appreciate everybody coming and exploding hearts and thumbs up. Um, it's kind of distracting for myself. As I said once before, I've never really 
been on these live feeds before. So thank you all for your attention and interest. And of course for Brie, who um, inspires me all the time. Her craterix, whatever she is, the, the crater in here really inspires me. So yeah. Well, you inspired me. Oh, thanks. But yeah. And you inspire us. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Thank you, thank you all so much for joining us. Whatever part that you have listened to. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Send uh, send all questions through the master. We're all masters. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I love you too, Cam and Tara. Oh, good. I'm so glad this was interesting. And truly, we're just honored that <coughs> Pardon me. it's just beautiful to see community grow and everything like this. Yeah. Um, Angela, you're the best as well. And everybody else, email. If you have questions, email. Yeah. Because email is great. And we're actually even open. I'm going to throw in one last thing. Mm -hmm. If you actually want to do a live call, like if you have like a lot of questions, I'm, I think this is really cool. I think so. I'm Kat and I are both totally open mm -hmm. to do like a Skype in person chat. Yeah, so yeah. If, you, if you need a one on one, I've got a million questions. Give me more information. Give me an email and we can set up the live uh, audio call or I like the face to face. So if you're comfortable with that, that's a really nice way to get more connection. So. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Uh, have a wonderful day or night, depending where you are in the world, my friends. Sure. And we'll see you hopefully in the training. <laughs> Salute. Bye. Salute. And, <laughs> and then end. And, and then end.